Are your headphones not providing the quality sound that they might actually be capable of? Can you get audio audiophile quality sound with hardware that doesn't cost thousands of dollars? This company says it can make your headphones better with software. Welcome to Tech First Draft. My name is John Kutsir, and today we're speaking with Matthias Johansson, the CEO of Dirac. He's fixing crappy audio with software, and we're going to find out how. Matthias, welcome. Thanks, John. Pleasure to be on the show. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for joining all of us. It's wonderful. You're on a quest to fix bad audio. Why? Well, you know, I think, first of all, hearing is one of our five senses, and we're just constantly surrounded by audio. Uh, some of us might get pretty good audio, but for the most part, we actually are surrounded by audio, which is, like you put it, crappy, or at least not as good as it can get. Mm -hmm. Even the best sound systems out there can actually sound a lot better. So we're going to dig into all this stuff, and we're also going to talk about why you started the company, how you started the company. Uh, but I want to also, um, at some point, get into what brands and what kinds of headphones and earbuds that you can fix in software. Let's start here, though. What's the problem with most headphones and earbuds that are sold today? Right. So well, first of all, I must say, you know, we, be, we, we have to be fair to all the, the great guys who build those speakers and headphones because it's a hard thing to do. When you think about the human auditory range, the frequency range, which we can hear in, it's from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. In wavelengths, that's from 17 millimeters to 17 meters. That's a lot to ask for one little transducer to reproduce perfectly. So there are lots of compromises that go into building a great headphone or a speaker. And, and that's what we're trying to fix in software instead. So that's really, you know, the problem is the actual transducer itself. It's a mechanic system that moves air. It's really hard to cover that whole frequency range. Consider, you know, reproducing a grand piano with the same instrument as you're reproducing a human voice with or a drum. It's mm -hmm. that actually what we're asking these headphones to do. So it's not easy. <laughs> so <laughs> it's not easy. You're trying to fix it in software via an app, via an app. Talk to me about how. Yeah. So in essence, first of all, what is the, the task that a good headphone has? Well, it should reproduce the sound as it was intended by the artist. Let's, let's consider music as the use case. It could be anything. It could be a podcast like this as well. But what we're trying to do is just get back to that original intent of the producer of that you know, music or whatever it is. So in order to do that, the speaker or the headphone needs to be perfect in the sense that it's just transparent. It doesn't add any coloration. But what happens when you send out anything through a system such as a speaker or a headphone, which is essentially a speaker as well, is that it gets slightly distorted and it varies from frequency to frequency. You think about the membrane of a speaker or a headphone, it just moves air in and out mm -hmm. like this. Mm -hmm. And it's of course very hard to if you put uh, if you put it like a like an impulse like that through a speaker, the membrane should just move out and then in and stop there. What happens though is it continues to ring a little bit. I see the ring system and stuff. So what we do is we measure those headphones or speakers. With microphones on various kinds of measurement devices in many different ways to kind of catch the acoustic fingerprint. What happens with the music that we send through this speaker or headphone? Well, when it, when it reaches our ears, then we can compare that with what the input was that we sent out. And that way we can construct what we call a digital filter that actually pre-compensates the signal sent out to the headphone so that the headphone itself kind of turns back the signal into its original intent. It's very much like if you have an analogy like eyesight, glasses fix poor eyesight. And we're doing the same thing for speakers with the audio reproduction, if it makes sense. <laughs> it, it does make sense. Um, why are the manufacturers of these devices not doing them themselves? Well, first of all, uh, they're trying, of course, to do it as good as possible with the hardware. But hardware is, is still analog hardware. It's only so much you can do. 
and it costs more and more, you know, the, the better you want to do it. Yes. And the second step right now, of course, headphones are getting digitalized. They're wireless to a very large extent. So now at least you can do some processing in the actual phone, but it's still limited. You don't have that much processing power. And, and we've been around for many years to, to help manufacturers, also headphone manufacturers, but all, all kinds of sound system manufacturers to do this kind of processing, to make these headphones and speakers sound better. And, and, and that's what we're doing right now. We're bringing it also to, to the end user directly through this app. And that's also the idea here because when we work with, with some of our customers are big um, car manufacturers such as Volvo or BMW, Rolls-Royce, these are customers of ours. And when, when Volvo puts, builds their sound system, you know, they have a Bowers and Wilkins sound system right now that sounds really, really good. And it's mm -hmm. been optimized by us. Uh, and, and it's also great hardware, by the way. But of course, there's no on off button to what we're doing. So the yeah. end user gets like, wow, this is great sound. But it's also hard to see for the end user what the digital part is actually doing. And it's so massive, the improvement. So it's also one of those things we just want to let people know any type of hardware, any type of sound reproduction hardware can be made sound a lot better with simple, or what simple and simple, but, but with software, not yeah. expensive hardware. And I think that's the other thing. We just want to let people know about this because it's a problem that people don't really realize. They're always exposed to this bad sound, actually. Yeah, well, you sent me a, um, a phone with your beta app on it. I tested it. I listened to it. Um, it was interesting. It sounded really, really good. It it honestly sounded more. I has. I'm trying to find the right words for it. it it's hard to express an, an auditory experience. It sounded more real. It sounded yeah. more present. It sounded more like maybe I was in the place where the music was being recorded in the concert hall or something like that. Uh, so I enjoyed that. But I had it on a beta app um, on on a special phone that you sent out. What kinds of headphones or earbuds do you support right now? And will you eventually support everything? Yeah, that's the that's the vision to support everything. And we already, by the way, we work with a lot of manufacturers. So sometimes it gets built into it and we're not even you know visible to the end user. But with this app right now, we're supporting at least a hundred different headphones. Wow. You know, all the popular brands like Bose. Beats, JBL, uh, Bang & Olufsen, you name it. And we're constantly adding support to more and more headphones. And that's also something we within our app that users can you know, feedback and say, hey, my, my headphone isn't supported. Can you please do it? And we have a nice little process to take care of that. So step by step, we'll cover everything. And we'll cover more use cases than just headphones as well. We're starting with headphones because that's where people spend a lot of time listening to music. And, and I don't know if you've noticed, but at least for me, when you listen to music through a headphone, after a while you get a little bit tired because it is kind of an unnatural sound experience. And that's because it's really hard to make headphones sound really good. One mm -hmm. of the things, by the way, with headphones that I didn't touch upon is, unlike when you're listening to speakers, uh, headphones completely isolate your two ears, right? So. If you just listen to stereo speakers normally, then you have a left and a right signal. And what happens is that, of course, when you play back just the left signal, goes out through the left speaker, it reaches your left ear, but also then your right ear a little bit later and a little bit attenuated. With headphones, that's not happening. So if you're listening to Beatles, for example, which did a lot of funny stereo experiments and put everything in, in you know, the left channel and everything else in the right channel, it sounds really strange in a headphone. You can try that out if you haven't. And we also fix that. So we create sort of an ideal high feel listening experience with the headphones. We also remedy the stereo image problem. And that's why I think you also experienced that it became much more real because you can separate where the instruments actually are in the recording. Interesting. Super interesting. So before we got on air here, you talked a little bit about how you started the company, why you started the company. Can you tell that story right now? Sure. Yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting story in a way, because first of all, uh, uh, it was back in school in university, in my university days. And and I remember so well, um, you know, I had to take a class called signal processing. And, and anybody can can appreciate the fact that that doesn't sound fun at all. It sounds pretty boring. And, and I thought it was until I, I got into the last semester with signal processing, my professors were really great and opened up my eyes to what you can actually do 
it's like you can you can do anything. You can really do fantastic stuff with signal processing. And it led me to do a master thesis on how to improve small speakers with the help of, of digital processing. So very much like in this app, we measured computer speakers and we then optimized them. And the improvement was so dramatic. This was just intended to be a, a research project, but we thought it was it was a night and day difference. We thought, hey, we got to share this. <laughs> and we decided to participate in a business plan contest here in Sweden, where I'm based. And we ended up winning it. And, and that was the start of the company. And in the beginning, we started out you know, on our spare time, just doing it as a hobby. Because this was back in the day when, when sound systems were anything but digital. And, and even to talk about using digital processing to improve the sound experience was almost a taboo in the industry. Um, and step by step, you know, we overcome, overcame these barriers and, and people started to listen to what we were saying in the industry and saying that, well, you know, they, they actually makes sense. They're, they're saying things that make sense and they heard it and eventually they started to think, well, it works. And we got into BMW being our first customer in the car industry where they had digital processes and then on and on into different industries. So this app is the culmination, you could say, of a lot of uh, industry work we do with, with B2B customers across various industries, from luxury cars to smartphones to pro audio systems and, and headphones and stuff. That's a great segue because I'm going to ask you very soon how people can get Dirac, how people can get that enhanced audio experience. But first, let's dive into how close are you to finishing? I saw the beta app. Um, and, and, and how close are you to actually being ready to release? We're actually be very close right now. I, I won't disclose a launch date, but we, we're, we're actually going to launch it in two different ways. Uh, and it depends a little bit on our partners which way we do first. So first of all, it will be a direct consumer app for download, both for, you know, for Android and Apple. Uh, but we'll also do what we've always done, because one of the things which is important here is we really want to reach everybody. This is not just for audio files. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what we find out in tests as well, that, you know, regular people, quote unquote, uh, really enjoy this improvement. People who say, no, nah, I won't hear a difference. I don't really care. I think my sound system is great. My sister was like, you know, I have the earplugs. Why, why would I need this? this I can great. totally relate because I've had experiences in the past where, you know, this is audiophile quality sound and it's $1,500 for this headphones or something like that. And I didn't really catch too much of a difference, you know? Yeah, exactly. It's a lot. I mean, that's, to be honest, we in the audio industry maybe has a lesson or two to learn here because I think there's a lot of overpromise and under delivery. Uh, but I think, and I hope you agree with, with the demo you've heard so far, that, that this actually does make a meaningful difference. And so, yeah, so so like I said, we, we're going at it in two different ways, you could say. Uh, one is the app, and the other way is to partner with companies such as smartphone vendors but also streaming services. So mm. that, that's always that's already actually uh, things that are coming. We know that. Uh, we just don't know the exact launch date. Because when we go through these kind of partners, of course, we can get bigger reach. And yes. that's what we want. We want to be like, I, I sometimes compare ourselves to IKEA, the furniture maker, also from Sweden, that you know, <laughs> we try to make quality sound for the many people, not just yeah. for the audio files. And we want to have reach. And it's very hard. As long as it doesn't have to be assembled at home. Yes. <laughs> Good point, John. I love that. But let's think about that. Maybe we need to have it. <laughs> no, and, and that's a good point. That's that's one of the feedbacks we've gotten as well, you know, that people really like the simplicity of the app. Mm -hmm. uh, in the audio file community and in the pro audio community, people, of course, like to fiddle around with the sound and be able to have a lot of settings and so on. We think that, and, and that's what we've got confirmed, that Yes, for, for the niche audience, that's great. You can set the sound as you want it. But for the most part, people actually just want great sound. Yes. Regardless of your content, I don't want to adapt it to the specific things I'm listening to. I just want better sound, yes. more clarity. I hear what people are saying in the movie, movie and so on. And that's what we're focusing on. Interesting. So, yeah. Good, good, good. So in my testing, the what, what was very cool about the testing experience is I could flip the 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 processing on or off, on or off, and I could hear the difference from second to second. Not never mind, you know, try this song and then try that song, or try this set of headphones and then a few seconds later try that set. So I could really see or, or hear <laughs> the difference. Um, one thing that I noticed is that for podcasts, some of them sounded echoey. 
is that because mm -hmm. they're just not recorded at the same high quality as um, music that might be recorded in a studio? Uh, that's an interesting question. A lot of podcasts aren't really like yours. They're they're also you know they're recorded in in environments which are pretty echoic, pretty reverberant. Yes. And with our technology, we'll hear if it's in a reverberant environment. So that's one of the things. Actually, this this first release of the app is primarily we're not you know doing any kind of reverberation, de-reverberation, taking away that kind of reverb. But we are because we're focused on music, and of course, if if it was recorded in with reverb on, we don't want to remove that. We want it to be exactly <laughs> yes. as it was intended. But but for if we do know that this is actually a podcast or a, or a voice call, for example, we can do specific optimizations that really address speech intelligibility, maximizing speech intelligibility. Mm -hmm. Rather than that, the basic technology we have will bring out whatever quality of recording you have. Yes. Yes, that makes sense. Okay, cool. So um, you're coming out, there's going to be an app, you're working with streaming services, you're working with headphone manufacturers, other, other places like that. For people who already have a set of headphones or earbuds, and they're thinking of, hey, th I'll try this out. When your app is available, is it going to be available for purchase? Is it subscription? What's the model? Right. So first of all, we'll actually launch a beta program. And, and also the best way to stay tuned is to, to look in at our website, direct.com uh, or, or Twitter, LinkedIn or, or Facebook. Um, uh, and, and it will be a most likely a free download. And of course, the, the first thing is, you know, it's going to be a free trial and then it's going to be a subscription model. Uh, but really, it's, it's not going to be expensive at all because we want this to, to go out mass. And we think that when people just hear uh, the on off you don't want to go back that that's been our experience so mm -hmm. so for us it's more of getting out there and getting visibility than making the most buck out of every single person excellent cool and i have to ask because you brought it up and i'm a reporter so these things have to be asked you mentioned streaming services can you mention any names is it spotify mm -hmm. is it apple is it amazon is it google I uh, know I <laughs> can't mention I mean, names yet. Hopefully, you know, all of them eventually, right? But, but yes. step by step, we, we'll see. It, it's probably not going to take too long until we can we can announce something. Excellent. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Um, thank you so much for joining us on Tech First Draft. This has been a real pleasure. Uh, for all listeners, uh, watchers, viewers, whatever platform you're on, please like, subscribe, share, comment. If you're on the podcast later on, you like this, please rate it and review it. Thank you so much. Until next time, this is John Goods here with Tech First Draft. Thanks, John.